Welcome to the Three Knockdown Rule. Story, Mario Lopez and Steve Kim. Presented by Hustler Casino and UFC Fight Pass. Ladies and gentlemen, the three knockdown rule is, yes, back in effect. Don't call it a comeback. No, I actually do. And we, right, I'm, I'm actually <laughs> stunned we're doing this. Mario Lopez, Steve Kim talking all things boxing. We've been gone since August. And Mario, I wow. can't believe it. We're doing the show again. We are. It's nice to see you. And it's nice to be back. If you didn't have so many dang issues oh, me, and throwing me. monkey wrenches right mm. here. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But uh, we got smoking uh, Tim Fraser back with us as well and the whole team. So looking forward to diving right in. Lots been happening since we've been gone. Yeah, and we want to say to the fans, for all of you that came in on social media, gave us messages, tweeted at us, asking when the show is back. First of all, thank you for the interest. Thank you for listening. Absolutely. We and we look, we, we are... Going to apologize. Our delay was a little bit longer than we thought, but you know what? All's well that ends well. We're going to be here on a weekly basis on various different platforms. Hello. But before we get started, a fine word from our sponsors. The Three Knockdown Rule is brought to you by the Hustler Casino. It's our favorite local L.A. casino <laughs> and home of the most popular <laughs> poker live stream in the world, a Southern California staple since 2000. And Mario, we're going to mm. do a lot of looking back. But for this particular show, we're going to look forward. Next Saturday night at the MGM Grand in Las Vegas on ESPN Pay-Per-View, I'll be in attendance for the lightweight nice. championship of the world. Devin Haney takes on Vasil Lomachenko. Mario, the question is very simple. At this stage of his life, does Loma have what it takes to beat a master boxer? Yes, is the simple mm. answer. I, I don't know why people are so quick to write off Loma like he's not this incredible talent, sort of once-in-a-generation type fighter. He, look, I've always thought, obviously, and a lot of people have thought he's a little small for this weight class, and at the same time, Haney, I can't believe he makes that weight, and he's still able to make that weight. Last time we saw him, I thought that was the last time we were going to see him at lightweight. Be that as it may, and he is incredibly talented, and he looked good against Cambosas. He has gotten buzzed by guys that aren't necessarily uh, heavy-handed. Jojo Diaz, I remember. And look, Loma looked really sharp this last time. And I think he knows what he's up against. I think he's going to prepare really well. And if he's able to fight the way he, the way, in a smart way, the way he always does, but in, in extend it and really push the uh, uh, gas to the metal in the later rounds, much like he did with Teofimo, even though that was a close yep. loss. I think he can actually pull off a victory, and I like Loma oh, in this fight. Oh. A lot of people are writing him off. I actually think he is a real live dog. I know Haney's going, and not to take anything away from Haney, not to take anything, he's incredibly talented. He's got a lot of um, momentum right now, and the way he's looked, I just think my guy squeezed him some, himself uh, himself down so much that I think the, the it's going to be take a toll on his body. And all those little feints and that movement that Loma does and the punches and bunches, I think it's going to wear on him a little bit. And if he's not able to time him perfectly and really inflict um, some damage early on, I think he might be a little tired later on and Loma might be able to steal a lot of rounds. Be that as it may, I, I'm not going to be surprised if Haney's out there and just... Uh, does what he needs to do, but I think Loma's a live dog. I actually kind of like Loma in this fight. Am I crazy? Wow, I just love this. You walked right into the three knockdown grill and you ordered the upset special. Coming strong right off the I, I mean, bat. That, that's, am I, am I, my little, uh, what do you think? I, I enjoyed, here's the thing with Loma. His last fight in October, again, last year was very eventful. War in his homeland, had to do his part for his country, and I thought he looked very rusty against a very familiar foe, big, tall kid, and Jermaine Ortiz. I thought he struggled. and But the question then becomes, was it rust or was it corrosion at age 35? As for Devin Haney, he had a really favorable matchup against George Cambosis, who if they fought 100 times, may never beat him. With that said, I'm with you in this sense. I believe Loma is a very live dog, but here's the key. You said a word that I think is absolutely paramount to how he wins this bout. You said fight. That's what he has to do. Not from the late rounds, from round one. Round, I don't, if I hear this term, downloading. No, 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 no. I am so sick of, look, you're not AOL. Uh, remember the old download? Of course, of course. Of course. No, I'm, I don't not, saying, hear that I'm not saying he's trying to process. I'm Ugh. not saying any of that. I'm just saying, but look, that's when Haney's most dangerous is, is early on. So I think he has to be, he has to have effective, smart Oh, direction. I disagree. 
No, see, Aunt I, Haney already has problems making weight. You got to put pressure on his legs. I disagree. Early, I disagree with you. That's going to pay dividends later on. Again, going back to the Diaz fight, when he was able to hurt him, it was late in the fight. Whenever Haney has gotten buzzed, it's been late in the fight. And a guy that's going to keep him on his toes, a lot of movement, a lot of those Mario, fades. Now, I think. The odds are better for if him catching him later in the fight because it seems like Loma tends to have the snowball effect and get stronger as it goes uh, on. In my view, if you're going to do that pick and prod and, and kind of download, you're already down 5 nothing. I just said over. don't download. No, I'm no, not no, saying no, no, that no, 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 but the way you're saying that he has to do it, that's that's a version of downloading. No, fight smart. And I don't know if be that's aggressive. Ethernet don't be reckless. or wireless, No, you're making it downloading. sound like he needs to be reckless in there. I'm saying he's got to fight a little smart. Pick his spots and then pick it up as it goes and even uh, put the no, uh, no. pedals to the gas there's even a, a little bit more. There's a fine line between reckless and really intelligent aggression. Exactly. And there's a term used by Mike Tyson. Here. Mike Tyson said... I was a aggressive counterpuncher. Mm -hmm. That's what he has to do. You know one thing that is really against him physically, Loma? He's got short pterodactyl arms, even for that size. So it is imperative. He's got to get chest to chest. Cold as ice. Called him a T-Rex. Yes, but, but that's um, the truth, though. I know. I agree. Look, on the same at the same time, I don't think Haney's ever had so much confidence going into a fight. He's got the wind against his back. All things are in his favor right now. So it should be a really great fight. Two elite fighters, and this is what we should be getting. Mario, is this a referendum <coughs> on the all-time or true greatness of Loma? Given the fact, as, as highly as many people have thought about him, you know he only has 19 fights and he has two losses. Now, you could put an asterisk by the fight against Salido. Some people thought he rallied to do enough against Lopez. Uh -huh. But my view is this. There's a lot of people who are going to say – that if he does not beat Devin Haney and become the undisputed lightweight champion, then maybe, in retrospect, to a certain degree, maybe Loma was overrated. I disagree, because it's a case of quality over quantity. Look at the who's who and who he's beat. And he's really fighting out of his natural weight class right now. The fact that he's even fighting in lightweight at this level, I think, is really impressive. And the guy had hundreds of amateur fights, so he doesn't need to necessarily pay that many dues at the pro ranks. All right, it's a full day of boxing brought to you by Top Rank. <clears throat> Let's go through the ledger here. Starting at 3 p.m. Pacific, ESPN Plus will be featuring the undercard, which will have the likes of Abdullah Mason, blue chip prospect, and Emiliano Vargas, another blue chip prospect, like young man yes. that we are very familiar with. Then at 5 p.m. Pacific time on ESPN, we have what they call the free view. Uh, it'll feature the likes of Nico Ali Walsh and a Japanese fighter that I really like, trained by Rudy Hernandez. Junto Nakatani will be taking on Andrew Maloney. For the vacant WBO Junior Bantamweight title, and I talked to Rudy Som a couple days ago at Panda's Gym. He says, Steve, I've been with a lot of fighters. I've had several world champions. I'm very familiar with the Japanese fight scene. I believe this young man may be the best boxer I've ever had since my brother, Chikanito. Wow. And he thinks already he might be the second best fighter from the land of the rising sun behind the great Nano Inoue. Wow. So to that I say... Bold statements. I say, bonsai. And then the... Uh, <clears throat> Pay-per-view starts on ESPN at 7 o'clock, and pretty good undercard here. Raymond Mutataya takes on Jeremiah Nakatila, and then in a rematch, Oscar Valdez takes on Adam Lopez. They they had a fight about four years ago on late notice where Valdez had to get off the canvas to win. Mario, interesting news. Should Valdez come out relatively unscathed, and this is going to be a pretty good fight, they're going to remake that Emmanuel Navarrete fight for August, I'm Ooh, told. Fun. That's going to be a Mexican war, and it's really a shame. When I saw Navarrete <coughs> get out by the skin of his teeth against <coughs> Liam Walsh a couple of months ago, I said to his manager, Frank <coughs> Espinosa, it's really a shame your guy couldn't make it to the dance. The Valdez that I know would have beaten that version of Emmanuel Navarrete. And we move on with the... Three knockdown rule uh, brought to you by Hustler Casino. We've missed a lot in 2023. Let's review some of the stuff that has happened. On March 25th, from Las Vegas, David Benavides overtakes Caleb Plant late, winning by the scores of 115, 113, 116, 112, 117, 111. Then April 22nd at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas uh, for the 136-pound title of the world. Dervonta Tank Davis runs over Ryan Garcia in seven. And a couple weeks ago, May 6th, Estadio Acron from Guadalajara, Mexico. Super middleweight championship is retained by Saul Canelo Alvarez against John Ryder. Mario, going back, uh, 
Plant built an early lead halfway through, and then he hit Heartbreak Hill. It played out the way I thought it was going to play out. Yep. Um, Benavides really has matured since mm. his uh, little party hiccup. Let's just uh, let's just call it. That's I happen a to nice see way him of putting it. The yeah. hiccup, huh? I sat next to. Um, it, it was cool going to not jumping ahead, but during the Tank Garcia fight. Uh, I sat next to Pacquiao, which was a lot of fun, and he was. We were kind of breaking down the fight together. Uh, how you doing, Mario? Uh, oh my God! Not for my too people. Early with the uh, I came here from the Philippines. Okay, who yeah. looks good, by the way? He looks great. Oh, like he might be uh, coming back. No, anyway, but anyway, just, anyway, but anyway, he just anyway. he looks yeah. good. Yeah. He was, anyway, you know, he was with his wife, Jinky. Anyway, Benavides was on the other side, right? So it was nice to see him, and he was with his lady. But he just looks very mature, composed, like he's mm. focused, which is great because yeah. a focused. Um, determined in shape Benavides is a dangerous dude. And he looked it in when he fought Plant. He was didn't rush in there, patient, calm, walked mm. him down, broke him down for such a big guy. The way he th- he closes that distance and throws those punches and bunches and those uh fast hands. And I'll tell you what, wh- who was the ref again? Uh that Kenny di- Bayless. Oh my god, Kenny Bayless usually does a great job. I thought my with all due respect, he was awful that night. He was awful that night. I thought Benavides could would have be would have taken Plant out had he not. Credit to Plant, by the way, who was also at the fight and still looked a little beat up. Yeah. When I saw him at the, the Tank Garcia fight, he still looked pretty. The guy's got a lot of heart. He can box his ass off as well, but being Benavides was just a little too much. But Bayless was letting him get away with a lot of holding and had another ref broken it up the way it should have been. I think he would have been able to take him out. It was a statement fight. And I think Benavides, outside of Canelo, is the man. Oh, we'll at, get to that later. We'll get to that later, but is the man at 168. And he showed patience. He showed different layers to his game. Plant as game as he was, and as tough as he was, just didn't have enough there. And it was a great fight. I really liked it. So now Kenny is the discount bin referee. He's now Kenny Payless. Now, look, putting that aside. Oh, uh, too early. Caleb Plant, <laughs> if championship fights were eight rounds, he'd be one of the three best fighters in the world, pound for pound. <laughs> but when he got hurt in the eighth round, I said, ooh, <clears throat> That should have been happening in the 10th or 11th. And you got the sense he was going to be that guy, 1,000 yards from shore. Water started getting into his lungs, and he started to drown. And I thought it was clear Damn, well, I gotta kill him. that Benavidez <laughs> was going to win this fight. Yeah. Now the fight I think a lot of people want to talk about. Uh, Tank Davis. Mario, when we did the show three, four years ago, I called this fight Tiananmen Square because I thought the Tank would run over Ryan Garcia. I think a lot of people have really analyzed the fight in a 1,000 different ways. But let's get to the to the blunt question everyone wants to ask. And no, did Ryan Garcia quit? Hold on. I'm going to rewind. I'm going to rewind. Don't even go there. First of all, I want to give him props in this sense. He called for this fight. He didn't have to fight Tank. My guy called for this fight, and he was campaigning for, what, a couple years at least? And guess what? He made it happen, and it was a huge event. There was a lot of buzz leading up to it. Pay-per-view numbers were strong, okay? And when he showed up in the ring, he came to fight. Now, whether he, really? yeah, really? he didn't let his hands go, Kim, in the first couple of, in the first couple he of rounds. He flailed a lot. Yes. Okay. I listen, okay. we're not going to get into the technique. I'm trying, but what I'm saying is he didn't go there and try to run. He actually went in there and tried to fight. Was he successful? No. But I like the fact. I want to point out the positives first. I like the fact that he called for the fight. He actually made the fight happen. And when he got in there, he came to fight. Now, as far as the fight itself. When we talk about there's levels to this, when I saw Tank walk into the ring, my guy looked like he just got out of a spa. So relaxed, his mm. face and his demeanor so composed. I go, uh oh, this is he's mm. used to this sort of moment, and my he is not mm. overwhelmed by this at all, and as calm and collected as you can be, and that's how we fought. Ryan in the first round when he was pumping that jab and he was disciplined, I said. Okay, if he's able to keep that up, which I don't know if, if he can, but if he's able to keep that up, could get interesting. For some reason, he went for broke in the second round, and you can't throw the same combination three times. A jab, hook, jab, look, hook. Uh, tank timed him, boom, that big left overhand right. Or left overhand left, I should say. To Ryan's credit, he was able to get, get up, but then at that point... Fight I, was over. Yeah, Fight I was, was like, over. <clears throat> Showed a little hard, had moments. Caught him a couple times, had moments. Tank was never in trouble, but man, he really um, was impressive in there, Tank. In the way he, those fast hands, he was able to kind of mitigate the timing, the space, uh, time those counters, um, and caught him with that body shot. Look, I don't ever knock anyone 
that and, and question whether you could have got up this and that. You're not in there. I'm not in there. We don't know how what uh, uh, how hard that shot was. Take hits hard. He's got a 95% knockout ratio for a reason. So I'm not I'm not uh, questioning that. Uh, for the event itself, I thought was cool, and for the fight, as it was great actually. And and the fight itself, for as long as it lasted, was fun and it made it interesting. Okay, let me bring some uh, brevity and some seriousness to this conversation. You can't deny anything I said. For Ryan Garcia, his victory was nothing more than getting the fight. It's a great payday. Congratulations to him. He's now in a different tax bracket. Wait, oh, I'm sorry to interrupt. I'm sorry to interrupt. But what my point in saying that, Kim, is we need more young fighters daring to want to fight other people. Right. And, and having matchups like that. Because we would have greater events like that. I don't that. necessarily disagree with that on the surface. That's you, all I'm saying. You, you know what I know? He wasn't serious about winning. And by the way, results matter. Um, the act of effort in itself is not just worthy of all the praise. So let's be honest about it. When he turned down that tune-up fight against Mercito Hestad, I said he's not serious about winning. I, I I was disappointed in that, and I think that would have been a huge um, difference. And I don't know if it would have made a difference in the outcome, but maybe made it a more big also, com- competitive. And by the way, Oscar wasn't comp- wasn't happy about that, and the people going well, weren't happy Oscar about that either. Oscar did not have the opportunity <clears throat> in his team to negotiate certain clauses like the weight and the rehydration. But again. Uh, he wanted the fight. Be careful what you ask for. The other thing with, with Ryan, and, and I, I wrote about this a couple of weeks ago on my column at Snack.com. If you're going to have a world-class trainer like Joe Goosen, um, you need to do more than just rent out his gym three days a week mm. and then go to the camp mansion and then do whatever you do. Now, look, Joe's a grown man. He made that deal, but I knew it was an issue when he said before the fight the week of, well, you know, you, we, we don't really train, Ryan. We collaborate. What are you, a Shante and a Ja Rule? Wow. Oh, get out of here with that. You got to use a more a Rock Kim and Jody Watley? Oh, my God. I mean, but honestly. Well, I'm, I'm over here with the fucking Weekend of Bernie's over here. Or Casey Kasem. <laughs> Korean yeah, Casey Kasem. Okay. But <laughs> my view is this. If you look at the movements of the actual fight, Ryan was jittery and skittish, and we all call that speed. He had no control of his movements. Well, he missed so many punches. Meanwhile, Tank Davis was in control And in command. And from the second round on, I said to myself, oh, this is just going to be a slow bleed. It's going to happen sooner rather than later. Now, do I blame Ryan for saying I can't do it? No, because a lot of fighters actually do capitulate. There's a thing called an honorable surrender. And maybe Ryan, knowing social media more than anyone in this world, understands I don't want to be a meme. I don't want to be Manny Pacquiao getting laid out face first by Pacquiao, which which ended up exploding the million meme march. He didn't want to do that, and he said, you know what? I don't want to get beat up here. I'm already going to lose the fight. But I will say this. You are right, Mario. Guys like me and you, we may not have the license if a guy quit or he should have done this or done that. But I will tell you this, and I'll tell you this off the air. I've had two Hall of Fame boxers tell me they flat out thought he quit. Okay? No. So I'll just lay it out there. No, I I heard a lot of that. Going back to his... Twitchiness, which I call, which I think when you're that twitchy and you're that fast, you're able to get away with a lot, and it's it's worked for him till this point. You can't do that once you hit a certain level in an elite fighter like Tank. Yes. So I think he learned that. Whether he's willing to now maybe go back to the drawing board and work more on the fundamentals remains to be Mario, seen. Mario, do you think I, he's really coachable? That's my biggest. <laughs> Well, question. you know, I, I'm not in his head, Kim, so I don't know. But if you're having an honest conversation with yourself and a come to Jesus moment, I think I, 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 well, me, I can speak for myself. I would be like, yo, if I want to keep doing this and be successful at this level and hang with the likes of like Tank, then I need to have someone who's smarter than me, been around, listen and go back to the drawing board and start from square one. Otherwise, I'm never going to accomplish things that, that I want to accomplish. Given the fact that this did Bafo box office numbers. Is there a rematch within a year? No, not within a year. You don't think He's, so? Why no, not? Not within a year because that's not enough time. That's not in a enough year? Time. No, I don't think so. Look, how much time? No, wait, 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 in a year, bro. With, within these a guys year. fight like three times. If the, three times is lucky. I mean, it's busy in these calendar years. No, I uh, would say. So let me ask you this then: What other fight besides each other brings in the type of numbers? Well, they no, you're, just no, did? you're no, you're not. Okay, are you asking me what I think is best, or are you asking me from a business perspective? Because. Do, do I what I think okay. is best for him to have the best shot no, at Mario, winning? That's Hold interesting on. you say let, that. Let me, let me answer your question. What I think is best, for what I think is best, if I'm in the Garcia camp, to put myself in a position to want to beat him, it's going to take over a year. What I think is best, if I want uh, to make the most money, 
and maybe cash out. Well, then, yeah, Don't that's you a different answer. Don't you think the ladder that you just described is all what Ryan Garcia is about? Do you want longevity? Are you looking at the big picture? That's what I'm— I know they never have because if well, they you're did— you're speculating. I don't know. So I'm not— spe- I, I'm, No, no, no. I'm, I'm going back. I'm going— like, Your track record is going to tell me the roadmap to your future. And if you're not willing to fight, Mercito has to, in late January, in preparation for a southpaw— that already shows me right then, going into the future, you're not going to be any more active. This, well, Kim, what I'm saying, I agree with you, but what I'm, well, no, no, I don't agree with you, but I see your point is what I'm saying. It comes down to, if you're going to be honest with yourself, and, you, and this is a come to Jesus moment, because if you're honest with yourself, then you know. And Mario, there may be no other pure boxing fight, short of the heavyweights, that'll do the number of pay-per-view buys as Tank Davis, Ryan Garcia, That too. goes back to my point when I said at least Ryan was calling for this fight, made it yeah. happen, and look at the success. Other young fighters need to do this. Yeah, he wasn't ready. He didn't, he didn't rise to the occasion. He didn't get the victory. But, hey, some credit has to be given because the fight did happen, and it was a success. Yeah, and meanwhile, again, we'll see what happens. Tank Davis <laughs> right now currently on a uh, <laughs> staycation. Also, mm. Saul Alvarez. One against a very tough guy in the gorilla, John Ryder. No monkey business there. I enjoy that performance. Salute to Ryder. Showed a lot of guts. But Saul Alvarez now has <clears throat> 64 fights under his belt. Has he lost an inch off his fastball? Hold on. Before I answer that question, because coming off the heels of the tank fight, a lot of people started calling him the face of boxing. Pump your brakes right there. <laughs> After you see that entrance... And the production with Canelo. Unbelievable. That thousands of people that don't understand. That is still the face of boxing. That is still the biggest star. So that really, to me, put it in perspective. Yes, that was an incredible performance from Tank Davis. And I like him. And afterwards, the way he handled himself, I think I like the kid. And I think he's great. But he's not on Canelo's level yet. And he's not, he's not the face of boxing yet. Canelo still holds uh, that title. Um and yeah, kudos to the production too. That was a great entrance, great production. The fight itself. <clears throat> a couple things about Canelo, and you know I'm a big Canelo fan too, because he, to me he always continues to want to improve, faces um, tough opposition, wants to challenge himself, is is calling for that Bivol fight yet again. More on that later. As far as this fight, I I didn't the slick head movement that I'm used to seeing, the bobbing and weaving is it just looked like I and I know he just had surgery. And I'm not trying to make excuses, but it wasn't as sharp as it usually is. The jab was there, and and and, and some of those counter punches were there. But I don't know if we're seeing the physical descent because I don't want to take anything away from Ryder. My guy came to fight. He was a tough, strong guy, southpaw, and it would have got real interesting had he not broke his nose in the second round. So he came to fight. So I think it was a combination of, I don't know if maybe... Um, Canelo was uh, just off, didn't get to train as hard or just off the, off the uh, heels of the, of the surgery. Just we did not used to seeing some of the sharp tools that I just mentioned. But I also think Ryder really, really came to fight. And I think other fighters should take a page from Ryder because even in that loss, his stock went up. So the Charles and these other guys that don't want to necessarily take the risk or challenge themselves, I hope that is an example of look. Even if you fight and you may lose, your stock's not going to drop. People are looking at you still in a high regard. Mr. Lopez, I believe that Sal Alvarez is still very much elite, but he is no longer at his apex. Look at this. First of all, he has now close to 65 fights. Most careers nowadays, as you look at the new generation of stars coming up like a Shakur Stevenson, they're not going to even get to 40. Keep this in mind. People say, well, he's only 32. Mm. Mario. Do you yeah, know a lot of tread on those tires though? Yeah, a lot of surgeries, a lot of yes. surgeries. Kim, I don't think so, people are aware of that. Think about this: he, more years of his life on this planet, he's been a professional fighter than not. I know. So in other words, he went 15 years just being a regular guy. His last 17 have been taking punches and giving them. So there, there is a physical erosion of, taking of course. place. I mean, that's just natural, you know. And look, those aren't street miles. My guy's been on the autobahn for a yeah. long time. So, of course, that's going to have this effect. But the thing about Canelo, as opposed to guys like a, a Roy Jones, for example, who um, used a, relied on a lot of his athleticism to— uh, He'll age better as get, a fighter. Yes. Canelo will age better because he's so fundamentally sound and he's so defensively um, well-equipped that I think— he he will age better and he'll continue to be the face. And Mario, for a I couple thought, more years. I thought the first four or five <laughs> rounds, he really put. He was huffing and puffing, mm-hmm. trying to blow that house down with one big right hand. 
think he wasn't as fuel efficient and he wasn't the combination puncher because he was looking for that spectacular knockout. But again, mm-hmm. I still believe it'll take a hell of a fighter on a really good night to beat him. So with that said, if they fought right now in, let's say, six months, Benavides Canelo, who do you favor? Um, you know, That's a hell of a fight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a hell of a fight because I still think Benavides, his style plays into Canelo. Come because, right to the wood chipper. Right to the wood chipper. The guy, look, look at the guys who give Canelo problems. Guys who are fleet of foot, okay? Yes. Fast hands, fleet of foot. Now, Benavides has fast hands, but he stands in front of you. And, and he's he, squared up. Yes. That's the thing. And Canelo, with his counterpunching and that body right in front of him, ooh. It, you know what I'm saying? The Styles, styles makes fights, and I think it's a, hell, it's, a hell of a, uh, it's a hell of a fight that I want to see. But, I'm, I, but I still think Canelo has the advantage because of the particular style. And assuming he's prepared while well, the body's healed, and we see the Canelo... Um, that we're used to seeing, I, it, but it's a tough, tough fight. But I think I still have to lean towards him. The one thing tough Caleb, fight, the tough fight. one thing Caleb Plant could not do was really ever dent him or hit him to a point where he made him think twice about just marching in. Right. Canelo is not a wiffle ball bat. He's at least a Louisville slugger. He'll hit you hard enough and turn over his punches properly. He will at least stun Benavides, and Benavides is not hard to find defensively. Well, that's what I'm saying because he's not hard yeah. to find, and he's right in front of you, um, and he's used to getting away because his hands are so quick. That inside, that inside fight, Canelo is a master at that. And with those, in that body right there in front yeah. of him, and he starts hitting those ribs and that liver, it you know it it get interesting. All right, we'll come back on the three knockdown rule. A word from our fine sponsor, and we'll be back with more of the show. Get to streaming live right on YouTube. Right on YouTube. Welcome to the big leagues, kid. $1.2 million. Oh! And I'm losing in the fucking game. What the fuck? This is a 400k flip. If I win by the way, you get 10 grand. For my fans. What? Wow. All in the call. I'm not fucking leaving. Raise it up. And we're back on the three knockdown rule. And again, if, if you'd like to sponsor this fine program, all sponsorship inquiries, send an email to info at boxbid.io. Once again, info at boxbid.io. All right, moving on. All right, we missed the last quarter of 2022 on this fine program, Mario. Let's go through some of the stuff Damn, you're going that back. took place <laughs> while we were away. September 17th, Sal Alvarez decisions <laughs> Gennady Golovkin in their trilogy. Then November 5th, Dimitri Bivol clear-cut 12-round decision over Gilberto Ramirez. And then Regis Progre on Thanksgiving weekend captured the vacant WBC 140-pound title by stopping the tough Jose Zapata. Lopez, do you know that... Um, Gennady Golovkin, Canelo 3 is in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. In what regard? Highest paid public uh, sparring session ever. What? I mean, I was expecting a war. We got a peace treaty breaking out. You know what? What a disappointment. I was was actually uh, thinking that, oh, you know what? Good for Triple G. I've always liked him. He's going to get this big payday. Gosh, man, I hope he doesn't get hurt. I I honestly was going into that Well, mission accomplished. Yeah, I was so surprised. I didn't know if it was like a... um, because he, there's so much respect there after all the wars, and he was still maybe a little leery because he still got, he still got uh, power in those hands. But yeah, it was, it was like too much respect shown. And Triple G actually had moments towards the Late end. In that fight, Late in the fight had moments. So you know, I love when those guys fight. But yeah, the third one was not up to par as the first two. Golovkin looked like a guy that had one foot out the door. Looks like he is, for all intents and purposes, retired. The old timers would say of that fight, one guy did little. And the other guy was happy for it. Mm. Um, I, I do think Golovkin, if he no longer has that fire, should walk away. It's that great line from Mickey in Rocky Three, where he's packing his bags and he goes, where are you going? And Mickey tells Rocky, the worst thing happened to you that can happen to a fighter. Got civilized. You got, he is now civilized. Yes, yeah. he is. Mario, Dimitri Bivol. Wow. He was the 2022 Fighter of the Year, and I thought he put on a masterful display. Everyone thought Ramirez is too big. He's going to do this. He's going to do that. From the opening moments, he just said, you know what? I'm going to step to the center of the ring. Draw the line in the sand and go ahead, breach my airspace or you're going to pay. Great performance. That was a different Bivol than we're used to seeing. More that confident. was a much more confident yes. Bivol. I think the victory over Canelo, he, he was just a different guy in there. And I was like, oh man, that's a dangerous guy because you're right. I thought Zurdo, who is really big for that weight class, 
Southpaw might be able to bully him a little bit, hang on. I thought it would make it a lot more competitive. It, it, it really wasn't. And Bivol showed um, how talented he was because Bivol's had some sort of lackluster victories. Yes. And he looked vulnerable um, at that level against guys maybe like Canelo and like Azurdo, like they, they could really uh, uh, come away with the win. But since that Canelo victory, man, my guy – did not rest on his laurels, took it up a notch, and that's a dangerous guy at uh, light heavy. That I, Canelo, I don't, I know he called him out after Ryder, but to Hold quote on. Rocky Three, no, do do Duke, do Duke. Do, We've been he, waiting for this one. He's all wrong for us, baby. <laughs> we don't need that kind of man in our lives. We don't need that kind of man. We don't need him at 168 or 175. I, I, if I'm Canelo, I'd much rather. Um, campaign for the Benavides fight. Right. And, and do you agree? I don't disagree. In an era where guys fight twice a year. I've seen enough Fast and Furious. Are, what are we on now? 11 10, or 12? 10. Oh, my God. Can you believe Good that? Grip. Dude, they went to outer space last time. Oh, they geez. were in space. Yeah, They're okay. going underwater this time. Um, <laughs> B-ball in that first round was controlling things with the jab. But he hit Ramirez with a series of right hands late, and the fight was literally, okay, you're not winning tonight. And you could see Ramirez was very hesitant, and he may have blown up to 200 pounds, here, size did not matter. Well, the timing of it and his his foot movement, his feints are so quick and, yeah. the, and his hands are so quick, but he darts in and out and with his feints and he punches in, in bunches. If you're not disciplined enough or if you're just, he just was, too, he didn't have the, the, the faculties to be able to yeah. uh, counter. And so my guy was just like swimming all night. And uh, uh, and I like Zordo, but uh, th- that was a very impressive beaver on there that night. And Mario, Regis Pro Gray, uh, who now Man. is the champion. It's interesting. Uh, top rank 140, I'm going to call it the pond. You know why? Because they're all ducks. And so he has to make the decision. He turned down less. He turned down more money from top rank as a free agent to go with Eddie Hearn. Because Eddie Hearn says, hey, you'll get three fights in a 12-month stretch and we'll do a fight in New Orleans. And get this. Uh, Subriel Matthias may be signed to Matchroom. Mm. That's one of the five or six best fights you can make. So congratulations to Regis Progre. I think he's a real fighter. Look, when Progre Zabella was signed, I thought that was a 50-50 fight. I, honestly, I thought it could have gone. Didn't you think prior it could have maybe gone either way? Because Zabella's yes. the kind of guy that he rises yeah. to the occasion of the level of his opponent. And and he's a great fighter. Um, and so for him to look as impressive as he did in that fight. Dominated like, him. He really he really made a statement. Yeah, Zapata is arguably in full fights where he's not injured, undefeated. Yeah. He dismantled him. Yeah, just, that's what I'm saying. piece and by piece. Julian Chua, who um, is a friend, as you know, and, and trained both the guys. And because he trained both the guys, stepped away yeah. out of those two. He, too, was even surprised. Uh, with the outcome, because again, they're both really good fighters. And Mario, looking ahead ahead here, <laughs> news and notes. Uh, we'll talk about this more in depth going forward. June tenth, from the theater at Madison Square Garden for the junior welterweight title, Jermaine Taylor. Excuse me, Josh Taylor takes on Tiafimo Lopez. Ooh. Then also, I'm gonna be there by the way. I'm um, gonna be in New York for that. Oh, interesting. Well, you're gonna miss Jaime Munguia's latest fight. I know uh, that's on Saturday. I know. Sergey Derivachenko in Ontario, California, and then July 8th, it looks like it's gonna be in San Antonio. Virgil Ortiz takes on Imanta Stanionis. and I didn't get this. Joe Joyce, who just got bludgeoned by Zhang Jale, they're gonna activate the rematch clause. I'll be honest with you, I don't see what changes. But Mario. Mm. Real quickly, with Taylor Lopez, I get the sense that top rank looks oh, at Taylor talk about that already. Okay. as a guy. Well, I just want to talk about this thing. One guy barely fights, may have lost a Caterall. Okay, and the other guy has just gone wacky. Do you think top rank is basically saying, we got two headaches, let's just see who comes out of this and have one? In a sense, and we'll break it down later, but I will say this. If Teo is able to come away victorious... He's right where he was when he beat oh, Loma. Oh, you think so? Yes. Yes, he's right where he was when he beat Loma. And he because unfortunately I've never I, I don't want to say I've never but he blew all that momentum and all the the good graces that he had on the heels of that. And now granted that was during the pandemic and all that mm. when he beat Loma, but if he's able to come away victorious and we'll break it down later, I think he's right back in there. Yeah, and as for uh, Jaime Munguia, <clears throat> he's going to start facing guys Bernard Hopkins did 20 years ago. I don't get what they're going on here. <laughs> Uh, would you be opposed to a Triple G Mungia fight at this point? Given the fact that I think Golovkin's heart is no longer in the game, that fight is now spoiled milk. Really? And here's the problem I have with Mungia. Hmm. He could have fought Charlo, but then Oscar said, wait a minute, I got to protect the zone, so they have to be if it didn't happen. He could have fought Janabek for the WBO title. Uh-huh. That didn't happen. And you know, and then, then uh, Demetrius Andrade wanted them, but they're like, oh, no one wants to fight Andrade. 
I have never seen a fighter turn down as many title fights within their own division in as this little time as Mungia. This is a former world champion who has over 40 fights now. I don't want to hear, well, he's young. No, no, that, that went past about mm. two years ago. I, I, I don't know what's going on with this career, but I'm losing interest quickly. I agree, and I'll say this. After this next fight, it's got to be something significant. We've been saying that for three no, fights. No, 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 yeah. but I think then, then yeah. uh, you know what I mean? That's, it's, uh, people are going to turn on him. Yeah, uh, and Mario, I don't want to be Depeche Mode and spread blasphemous rumors. <laughs> But, um, wow, Depeche Mode. Yeah, uh, De- Errol, Errol, Depress Mode. Depeche Mode, man. Good, good album back then. I just can't get enough. Anyway, oh, um, God. Errol Spence, Terrence Crawford. There are rumors that the conglomerate in Saudi Arabia is trying to make like this Don I've King been those rumors, triple but... header. They want to do Usyk. I against sent you that Fury. tweet. I sent you yeah, that tweet. Yeah, and it turned out there's actually some validity to it. Because, like, the, the Amir is Abdallah, there... I, well, look, there's talk. Well, look. Saudi Arabia and the Middle East have done fights, Mario. Well, no, they've got money. You know, <laughs> if right. this thing comes to fruition, I, I'm not a big fan of these fights in the Middle East or traveling abroad. Yeah. You make that triple header happen, I'll break out the I'll be a passport, Whoa. bro. I go. But you know, once in a I, lifetime. If if I agree in that fight, and I can't think of a card that's had that much. Money, well, no, total, not just that much money, but that, caliber, caliber, top to that, a card that with that much caliber, top to bottom. I'm trying to think of the last one. Revenge the brain. rematches. The oh Don God, you're going King. back. Don King with Look. the poster when they're all like this. Yeah, yeah, I love that one. Wow, we have to go back that think far. Think about it. The last time you saw a triple well, header of that's, that caliber. That's what I'm trying to triple. That's what I'm saying. It's it's been a minute, so yeah, that'd be worth a trip. Yes. Uh, also, a lot of stuff going on. UFC. That that machine keeps rolling on. And right now we go to Mario's Mount Rushmore of recent UFC bouts. Uh, UFC 285, John Jones, submission in one over Cyril Ghani. Then UFC 286, Leon Edwards with a close five-round decision over Kamari Usman. UFC 287, Israel Adesanya. Boom, KO2 over Alex Pereira. And then UFC 288, some controversy. Aljamain Sterling with a split decision in five over Henry Cejudo. Mario, the floor is yours. First of all, I want to give UFC... Uh, props, major shout out because we get Crawford, Spence, Mayweather, Pacquiao multiple times every week, every yeah. week. Yeah, it, it's the honestly the best bang for your buck. And yeah. talk about we just talked about a card being stacked, and you had to go back to the nineties. They to do remember. that consistently. They, they do, do that every week, Kim. They do. You've been over my house, and you've been seeing a lot of UFC cards, and you weren't even an MMA guy. And you got to admit. It is entertaining. Can I tell you something that Mark Ratner told me years ago? Mark Ratner used to be the head of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Real boxing guy. Love Mark. Yeah, to this day, I'm time. still very friendly with him. He told me when he first got that job years ago, he goes, Steve, you know one thing I've noticed that's so different than boxing to the UFC? And I go, what's that? He goes, we just did a show in Toronto, and we opened the doors at about 4.30. Packed. By 5.15, 80% of that audience yep. is there because the cards are stacked. Now, yep. you... Probably weren't there, but during the Ryan Garcia, Tank Garcia undercard, when I'm watching it through Beck the Bully and the other fights, half that crowd, no more, like two thirds of that crowd is not in their seat till about 20 I minutes know. before the fighters walk. Myself included. Myself, I was in the bar. Myself included. Don't blame you. That undercard, I don't blame you. <laughs> and so, but had the card been sex, that's what I'm saying. Shout out to UFC because they really do. It's yep. the best bang for your buck investment right there. And all those fights we rattled off, that's just this year. That's just this year, which is great. What's the first one that you mentioned? John Jones, three-year hiatus. Listen. Hasn't missed a step. To come off, people have to put, have to realize how impressive that is. To come off um, three years and to fight at this level and to go up a weight class. We're not talking go up a weight class of five, six pounds, okay? We, my guy went from 205 to the mm-hmm. limits 265, which uh, Ghani's got to pretty much cut mm-hmm. to, to, to maintain. And Ghani's, the, the crazy thing was, because I was at that fight, Ghani, who's incredibly impressive and just physically a specimen, so athletic, he looked like he was overwhelmed by the moment. He you looked think he not, froze a little I don't bit. want to take anything away from you Jones. You think he froze a little bit. But I think he did. That's not the Ghani mm. I'm used to seeing. Mm. He, I think he looked a little overwhelmed by the moment, the big lights, and I was like, wow, that's a trip, considering he was mm. in there with, um, he's been in there with Nganu. Now, that I mentioned Nganu, who was able to be victorious against him in a very close fight, it was his wrestling that came, and I go, uh-oh, because John Jones is a wrestler, really a wrestler, that's yeah. his base. He took him down, um, got him up against the fence, uh, got him in a guillotine, and that's all short. So it was so quick, and the fight itself was sort of underwhelming. And 
Jones has had his controversies from the failed drug uses, the DUIs, the baby mama stuff, all that stuff. But, man, you can't deny him. My guy. Does anyone beat him? Well, okay, he's he's going to fight. or I don't, It's not set yet, but it, it looks like it's going to happen against Stipe Miocic, who uh, a lot of people consider him one of the great. He's a little older now, long the tooth. Uh, but it should be very interesting. And he was a wrestler, too, so that should be competitive. Um but that should be a competitive fight. I think if Gane just has his little, if, if it's the Gane we're used to, that should be a better fight. A lot of people were picking Gane to win that fight. But the the elephant in the room is Francis Ngannou, who's just, he barely touches you and you're out. Yeah. It, it, he's no longer in the UFC, or at least not at the moment. And so that's what makes it all like, oh gosh, what if? And and a lot of people are, are you know, it, it counts, but we wish it was Ngannou. Mario, we watched this together. Adesanya looked like he was going to be overpowered and not mm. going to be strong enough for Pereira, but then the right hand off the cage, bang, fight's over. Kim, we saw both fights. I mean, geez. No, but right? Remember that? Yeah. We saw the first yeah. fight where, ironically, or coincidentally, I should say, um, Pereira was having some success. I'm going back to the first fight. In the end of the first round, Adesanya buzzed him, remember? Yeah. And then the bell rang, and he was saved by the bell, no pun intended. And then he came back, and he was it was competitive, but he was he was essentially behind on the cards. Yep. And then Adesanya, I don't know if he um, just had a little defensive lap, but caught him with that big left hook, and that was all she wrote. One would think because of that knockout that usually it favors the guy coming in who was victorious, yep. and you really see what the other guys made. I got to give Adesanya props. My guy showed a lot of character in there because up until the point where he got caught with that right hand. Pereira, I thought, was having a lot of success, didn't you? With the low kicks, the putt, and I thought it was just a matter of fact. But he made a very amateur mistake when he caught him and he stayed right in front of him. Hands are real low. Took a picture. Took a picture. Hood took a picture. No pivot. No angle. And Adesanya came with that right hand. And this time, there was a lot of time left on the clock and the bell didn't save him. And that was all she wrote. Let me. And so it was great. Now, they're one and one. Mm. Who do you favor if they go yet again? Adesanya. Really? I do. I do. He's a little twitchier. And I, you know what? I did love his celebration taunting the kid that it was. That was cold taunting, as ice. That was great. I love the fact he said F Damn, the kids, kid. too. He's a good Dang, man. Dang, kid. He's a good man. He wants to have a respectful uh, uh, youth. Mario, a lot of uh, controversy. Hmm. The temperature that I'm gauging is that the majority of people believe Cejudo beats Sterling. Agree or disagree? I do agree. It was a very competitive, close fight. Here's the fascinating thing about Aljermaine Sterling, and that was the first fight when he won the title. He went up against Peter Yan, who we both yep. really like, and he was losing that fight. Yan, yep. because he need him when his hands were down, yep. and a rule, a certain rule. Yep. You can do everything, but you can't do that. Yep. Um, he was disqualified, and he won. Then he had a rematch against him, and a lot of people thought Yan won that fight, but they gave it to Sterling. Yep. Okay. Then he fights TJ Dillashaw, who was literally fighting with a broken shoulder. So he's fighting a one-armed guy. Then he's fighting Cejudo, who's coming off of his own three-year layoff, okay? And I thought Cejudo, I had it even going into the fifth round, which a lot of people did too. And then Cejudo obviously won that fifth round. One judge actually gave Sterling that fifth round, which mm. was preposterous. And had he not, Cejudo would have got the victory. And 99% of the people gave Cejudo that fifth round. Very close, but at the end of the day, I still think Cejudo won. He was the aggressor. I always lean more towards the aggressor. And... Um, I thought the, the commentary was a little biased, toward, and they weren't counting a lot of the little shots, and it was a good fight, um, really good fight, technical, elite, but I did think Cejudo had enough to get his hand raised. Be that as it may, Sterling does find ways to win, so props to him. Yeah, I'm going to call Sterling David Copperfield. A lot of great escapes. But anyway, now, finally, people have been waiting for this. Final flurries. We have so much, but you know what? You turned me on to a show with, with a lot of Koreans, a lot of crouching tigers. And you said, Not Kim. because of that, too. I know. It, it was a show that I actually really liked. It just happened to have, and that's what I liked. It had yeah. nothing to do with it, right? Yeah, uh, and I said, okay, I'll give it a shot. I'll give it a couple episodes. I'm not going to lie to you. It started off a little slow the first, first of couple all, of minutes. Name the name of the show. It's called Beef. Beef, it's on Netflix. Or in Korean, it's called <laughs> Bulgogi. But yes, Beef I on Netflix. I love Bulgogi. Yeah, um... <laughs> I'm not gonna lie to you. Next time I get cut off by an Asian driver, I'm just gonna drive off. I'm not gonna have any. I'm not gonna. Did you like the show or not? I did. But the ending. <laughs> talk about the ending. But the show overall, that was very interesting, very compelling. And all these episodes are about 38 to 46 yes. minutes. They flew by. Flew. They flew. You by. saw it faster than I did. I called you and you binged it quicker than <laughs> I did. It really put. First of all, excellent acting. Yes. Ali Wong and Steve Yoon, the guy from yeah. Walking Dead, they were great. The whole cast was really good. And it's one of those shows, and I don't want to give it too much away, and people haven't seen it. 
you haven't seen it, huh, Frazier? No. It's really good because it's it's really well acted, and it's one of those shows like I can't believe they're getting themselves into the scenarios because this isn't giving much away. But it talk it's it's basically a road rage incident where they didn't even get an accident, and they, it spirals, oh, and it just spirals out of control, and then you start peeling away the layers of these people, and you're like, whoa. I will say though the ending. Oh, oh right, that psychedelic. Been, I was like, oh, well, come Mario, on. My wife was very disappointed. According to you, <laughs> so there, that's the end. There is no season two. Correct. Because the way they ended it, if it was a season two, then I'd be like, oh, okay, what's going on here? Now hold on a second. At least that was the plan. Yeah. Maybe because it's doing so well in the success. Yes. They may revisit it. But I, a tip of the hat. But the end, I do. And I don't yeah. want to give it away. But I do wish it was. A little, I'm glad you liked it. Yeah. So after the show, a, a public service announcement to our fine audience. If you get cut off by a little Asian female driver, let it go. <laughs> you have no go. idea where this it thing's going to go It really, go to. It really points don't. out I mean, that choices you make can affect you the rest of your life. And other people. Yes. Um, exactly. Mario, me and you saw this. Now, we were not a fan a couple years ago of the sequel to Creed. I think it's safe to say we're even less of a fan of Creed 3. That simply was one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Uh, that's, that's bold. I don't know if I've seen, yeah, yeah. I've seen a lot of bad movies, so I wouldn't. I just it was, oh, man. That was like a music video that and with some anime in there. And my guy, you know who I really liked in it though was Jonathan Majors, and my guy since that movie. Oh, it's bad oh, news. I've never the guy had back to back box office hits, number one movies, and then a woman like with many people, um, he got into in some some trouble. Well, allegations. That, Allegations that ended up he ended up getting dropped by all his representation and and the other role that he had locked down and I and I got to meet him I don't know if I told you at the red carpet at the Oscars right there hell of a nice guy too so I was really kind of bummed to kind of hear all that that's a side note but he did a great job in the movie I thought he was the highlight but yeah wasn't my favorite of the Rocky franchise I'll just say that yeah yes you, you with uh, Sylvester Stallone I mean Jose Benavidez a career welterweight oh that's right shout out to him though he is a Mexican <laughs> heavyweight champion he had a significant role there the guy is a junior middleweight uh, then, Hollywood Kim then the guy comes out of jail and in his pro debut fights for the heavyweight title <laughs> the other thing I didn't like so then he beat he had the, one tune up he had one tune up oh, yeah okay then, and then I don't understand this. So the guy, Majors' his character, wins the title, and Adonis is all pissed off, and he looks for him all over the place. Wait a minute. Who throws a beach party? No fighter has ever thrown a beach party. You might go to the hotel room. You might go to the casino. That's what ball. bothered you. Nobody ever yeah. says, hey, guys, if I win this championship, beach party. Like Annette Funicello. Give me a break. Uh Couple movies that I did like much more. Air about the shoe. Yeah, thanks for waiting for me, rap bastard. Uh, we were you're to the watch one that. who changed the plan. You had I had to work. Work. You had to move out of your mansion. So yes. <laughs> yeah, we're, anyway, we're right. <laughs> Air did a great job. My only thing is, they had Matt Damon play Sonny Vaccaro. He doesn't look very Italian. Yeah, that's <laughs> that needed to be like Danny DeVito. Or someone of that ilk. But overall, as someone that's an admirer of yeah. Michael Jordan, I thought they told a very, very good yes. story. They took some liberties. I'm and by the way, and the soundtrack sounded like it was great. Ben Affleck, hell of a director. Um, you know, I usually hate most boxing movies. Foreman, I thought, was excellent. That, I love to hear that. I haven't had a chance to see it yet. And um, I think I still have the link, actually. We had George Foreman. On the radio show, he looks great. He's he's you know uh, uh, still, great American story. Great American story, and he's he's still well spoken. And I love his story, and I'm glad it's finally getting uh, told. And I also interviewed the young man who played him. Now I want to give him credit. He was very um, committed to the role and very appreciative. So I like everything around. He kind of looked a little bit more like an older version of Frank Bruno. But I tell you what was impressive about him: the fight scenes and the choreography. He actually did a great job of replicating both versions of Foreman. Nice. And the Thrilla in Manila, the way they choreographed it, I was like, wow. Nice. They got it. I can't wait. I can't wait. Let me ask you, not to deviate yeah. too much off the thing, but am I crazy to think that if they had a rematch, Foreman would have beat Ali? Yes. I am crazy? No, no, no. I agree with you. Oh, you there's agree there's with me? a okay. reason I why Ali said, I did that once. I pulled off the miracle with the yeah. rope of dope. Right. Let's not. Go back to, we've already got our winnings. Yes. Let's go home with our chips. I was curious why there wasn't, yeah, and I was like, I bet you Foreman would have more discipline behind that jab, and yeah. But his story, I think, not to, again, Foreman, I think when talking of all-time great heavyweights, he really has to be... Um, Maybe top five. Yes, and I would even say Mount Rushmore, and I'll tell you why. So you got the Lewis, fact that, but, but the fact that... He was able to win the heavyweight championship and then a tw- take a 20-year hiatus and win it again... 
I don't think we'll ever see that again. Right, and he did it. Don't, in, don't you think that is yeah, like in strong eras too? That's what I'm saying. In, strong in the eras. fact that he was able to do that for that feat alone. I think you got to put him in the Mount Rushmore. Am I crazy? I think he makes a strong case. You got Ali, Joe Lewis, Larry Holmes, certainly George Foreman. Other people will have. I mean, oh, you're other, not putting Marciano up there? Marciano. Italian. People don't know. People Prejudice don't like his Italians? size. People don't like his size. <laughs> and he's like, oh, we're bigger than he is, basically. Seriously. <laughs> you know, Lennox Lewis had some bad yes. losses. Evander uh, Holyfield has to be given credit. Mike Tyson will certainly get his support. Joe mm-hmm. Frazier. But I do believe that George Foreman is much closer to the top five than he is the top ten. The history that was made. And that's why I give someone like a Bernard Hopkins so much credit. And he ranks so high on my list because longevity, I think, means a lot. The fact that he was able to stay to on top 50, of this. basically. Yes. Dude, that's impressive. Yes. As a guy that's going to hit the fifth level soon, I think that's incredibly impressive. Uh, Mari, who are you more impressed by? Nick Cannon spreading his seed like Farmer John in the spring or Robert De Niro at age 80 still having live ones? You know, you know why I'm so mad? Because I got to interview um, De Niro recently in Chicago for his new movie about my father with Sebastian Maniscalco. Ironic title. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. And it's sort of like Meet the Parents. It's a fun, it's a fun movie. And... Uh, he was on my bucket list. I hadn't sat, I had an opportunity to sit down with him. And when did I ever, I'm so mad because I literally, I, I, when did I ever think to ask him about the number of kids or him having a baby? The dude's going to turn 80 in two months. When did I ever think he did to ask him that he was doing a zoom interview and someone casually said over a zoom. So, you know, being the father of six kids, how, how do you think about your father? This is just like that. And he goes, well, I'm actually the father of seven kids. And then they just kept, and then somebody picked it up later on, but I am so mad that didn't come out yeah. and I wasn't able to talk about it. Whatever, be that as it may. Yo, my guy putting in work still, almost hitting the eighth level <laughs> with Michael Phelps type swimmers. That is wild. Are you kidding me? That is impressive. And in case you're curious, uh, there's a few other actors like Tony Randall, Felix from The Odd Couple. Yeah. My guy was in his 80s when he had a baby too. Anthony Quinn too. 80s when he's having babies out wow. here. Even Larry King, who looks like he can barely walk. He was having babies. Still have it's live his, ones. Still wow. have still live have ones. bullets in the chamber. I don't know if that's wow. a blessing or a curse. Because can you imagine being 81 with a two-year-old? That's a mean one. So oh, I wouldn't be getting up to change the I'd be like, hey, honey. Be, the wife's going to have to change two diapers. You'd be like, She's got to yeah, change his diapers right. and then the baby's diapers. And with their stature, they're like, honey, uh, I'm paying all the bills here. Isn't you that know wild, though, when you, you think Bobby D? Wow. Bobby D with four baby mamas and kids everywhere. He na- oh, but can I, did I tell you what he named his daughter? Gia. My daughter's oh. name, Gia De Niro. And wrapping That's it up awesome. here on Final Flurries, three knockdown rules, Steve Kim, Mario Lopez, a sad day in television, a sad day. A very serious person passed away, and I think one of the great shows of all time on HBO, and quite frankly, I don't think the show's been as good without him. Rest in peace. Let's lift our cup, lift our cup to Logan Roy. Boy, oh, I was going backwards. I, 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 <laughs> I, I was stunned when they killed him off that soon into this season. It ranks in my... Uh, Mount Rushmore of great HBO dramas. Mm. I go, no particular order. I, I had order. to talk you into watching it, really. Oh, shut up. I'm the one that told you about it, Ken. Oh, what a Game mentorosa. of Thrones. Orale. Game of Thrones. HBO dramas. Game of Thrones. Okay. Succession. Sopranos. The Wire. Those are my drama for uh, Mount wow, Rushmore. The Wire. What about you? Jason Whitlock would really be smiling right now. I, I would say Succession is up there. Hmm. No, but Succession's my favorite one. I just love Logan Roy. I want to be him. Come when on, I dude. Grow Remember up. how high we were on Game of Thrones when it first came out? But the first last three seasons, it became a little. No, not the last three. Episodes. I, I, mean, mean, I know, on. but but as a whole, it, that come on, come on. They killed Ned Stark. Look at the and body season. of the work, and you yeah. Know. But I I would say The Sopranos has to be given universal credit. Um, the one about New Jersey, Atlantic City with Nookie Thompson. Boardwalk Empire, I love that. I love that not one. Not enough seasons, though, but oh, I do love it. Oh, and another one that I love. I do love and this Empire. guy would be in my all-time uh, Mount Rushmore favorite HBO characters. Oh, Al Swearingen, Swearingen of yes. Deadwood. He's great. So, He's great. honestly. But Logan Roy, it's so funny because every show he'd have like this funny quote that you'd want to say in real life. Yeah. When the last couple of episodes post-Logan Roy... It's been about the kids, and they're okay. My favorite character now is Roman. Who's your remaining favorite character post-Logan Roy? Um, Don't say Shiv. No, no, no. Don't uh, say Con. Con Wom- is funny. Wamsgan. Oh, Tom. <laughs> Tom. Tom's making moves. Tom. Tom I like Tom, 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 dude. Tom. That last scene with him and Shiv. Tom, and I like Greg a lot. 
Yes, Greg, <laughs> Greg's kind of a schemer. Greg, he's a kind of, they're all schemers. Yeah, all There's schemers. no one likable on this show. I want to yell, yo, you're all crazy rich, chill yeah, out. You're, what good. You, what's up? you're good. You're good. All right, all right so well, are Mar- we. Mario, <laughs> we're back. It's, Salute. It is, you know, just salute this. But anyway, folks, we will be back on a weekly basis for the most part, talking all things boxing, pop culture, some UFC, MMA. I want to thank Hustler Casino yes, for being you. one of our fine sponsors. And again, if you would like to sponsor the show, certainly get in line right now. All sponsorship inquiries go to info at boxbid.io. So on behalf of everyone that makes this show possible, till the next round, goodbye, everybody. Ah!